This is Advanced SQL Formatting using SQL iQuery. It's part of our Transforming SQL to Excel on IBM i. I'm Bob Cozy with Cozy Productions, the authors of SQL iQuery. You can download this presentation by visiting our website at www.sqliquery.com. There's a PDF version available for you to pull down. SQL iQuery is a web and command line SQL processor for IBM i. It also includes a powerful scripting tool, which we're going to talk about today, that supports IBM i DB2 SQL statements. You can run virtually any SQL statement using SQL iQuery and its scripting language. You can send the results of SQL select statements to a number of different formats, including CSV, JSON for the web, Excel, PDF, and several others. It's very easy to do, and we have another video on this topic available for you to review. Now, SQL iQuery allows you to process your data in a much more meaningful manner than you do today with other products. For example, your data is out on the system today, scattered around, and you may run it through Query 400 or RPG with SQL, and you get some nice results. They're okay, but they're somewhat rigid and usually not very contemporary. If you run your SQL statements through SQL iQuery, you can output the results as a PDF file, as an Excel file, to the website as a JSON format data set. Even HTML tables can be produced and several other formats as well. It just does it for you. There is no customization required. You just tell it you want to output to that format and your select statement is automatically transformed into the format you desire and you get awesome results. In a previous tutorial, I illustrated how to convert SQL results to Excel using iQuery's run iQuery command. The run iQuery command basically specified the select statement with a test file, QCUST CDT, which is shipped on everybody's system and has about a dozen records in it. And I emailed the Excel output results to myself by specifying the email parameter subject and I included column totals just to be nice. Here's what the results look like. I got an email in my inbox and we got the results in an Excel file. Everything's great, works wonderful. However, what if you want to customize this and give it to an end user to use? You certainly don't want them typing in that lengthy command. Maybe you want to embed the command in a CL program, put it behind a menu option. There's a number of different ways you can do that. But one of the things we provide is SQL iQuery scripting which allows you to put the SQL statement and some additional commands inside of a source file member and then simply run that source file member by specifying the name of the source file on the run iQuery command. So SQL iQuery script is a source file member or it can be stored in an IFS text file. Some people prefer to do that. And it contains your SQL and iQuery statements. Normally for a source file member, the SCU type is SQL, but it doesn't have to be. Any SQL statement can be run. Several iQuery scripting commands are also supported, and we'll talk a little bit about those. iQuery scripting is a little bit like a programming language. It allows the users to control logic flow, accept and process runtime input variables, do some math, conditional logic, runtime SQL statements, control the SQL results, and communicate with web applications. It's already integrated with the HTTP server, so you can actually use your SQL scripts as a CGI scripting language. It's all built in. You can get cookies, you can get variables from their web forms. Everything just works. You don't have to do anything special to make it happen. So for today, what I'd like to do is show you how to take that SQL to Excel example from the other tutorial and convert it into an iQuery script. We're also going to decorate it up a little bit so that it looks kind of cool in the end user's email box. And to do that, I've written this script. Now I'm using the ACS clients run SQL scripts to uh, illustrate the SQL script here. I've typed it all in for us. It's all ready to go. I've already tested it. I know it works. But I want to go over each little piece here and describe what's going on. First, we have the output command. 
Now the output command tells iQuery what format is to be used for the result set. It effectively is the same as the output parameter on the run iQuery command. So by embedding this statement in your source member, you override whatever's on the command itself. So the command can be left to default. Here it comes in here, it says, oh, you want the output to be Excel. I'm going to use Excel format. That way users don't have to pick what format they're going to be using. In addition, I often like to override the headings that show up in that top row on a report, or in this case, in the Excel sheet in column A1. And iQuery supports up to four lines of text headings. So pound sign H1 through pound sign H4 identify the title text line for the report or Excel. And as I mentioned, up to four lines can be specified. So here I've done the first three lines as custom text. SQL iQuery to Excel demo with column totals. We need SQL to Excel. So that should be what shows up in that first cell on the Excel spreadsheet. Now, since we want to email this to someone, we're using the iQuery script email command, and we're telling it we're going to email the results to me. And we put a subject line in there for the email and the message body or text that's gonna appear inside the actual email that gets sent. So the end user receives not just a naked Excel file, but some text description along with it so they know what actually they're receiving. And you can use text or you can use um, message here. Either one, is there's synonyms in this case. Now, this is where iQuery script really shines with Excel. Excel command is supported and has several parameter options. You can set the background, the foreground colors of the fonts used in each cell in the header, and you can also set the font size. So here what we're doing is setting the background color to yellow, we're setting the font color to blue, and we're setting the font size to 20 points so that we make the font a little bit bigger in the headers. So those three lines of headers that I showed you above, pound sign H1, 2, and 3, will appear as a 20-point font in blue with a yellow background in the Excel file. Then, in addition to that, we're also going to include some column totals, which I'll cover in a second. And the totals parameter on the Excel keyword says, set the color for the totals to black and set the background color to yellow. Now, by default, totals are also in bold. So there's no need to go ahead and set the, uh, the font weight. And last, what I want to do is I want to set the spreadsheets tab name. I want to spread that worksheet name down at the bottom so it doesn't come up with the name of the file. I want to put some name in there. Maybe I want to put the user's name or I want to put the report identification. I just chose the word awesome. So I'm going to name the spreadsheets tab awesome. Now down at the bottom, we have the column totals. And I'm going to total column 10 and 11, meaning I'm going to total the balance due and the credit due in the spreadsheet that gets produced. So the column totals command in SQL iQuery allows you to set the column totals for the spreadsheet. And then finally, the SQL statement that's actually going to be run is specified as the last statement in the source member. This is the select statement, similar to yesterday, except I'm sorting it with the order by keyword by last name. But that's about it. It's going to run, and it'll be produced as an Excel file and then emailed off to bob at cozytools.com. How do we run this? Unfortunately, the ACS run SQL scripts command has no way to save the source member that we just typed in to an actual source file member on the server. So you have to use something else to do that. I suppose RDI would be an option, or you can just cut and paste it into an SEU work member. So anyway, I've created a source member called test XLS. It's in my QSQL source file in Cozy Test library. I can go ahead and use a user defined option I created that runs uh, SQL iQuery. It runs the run iQuery command behind the scenes. I just type in SF right next to it. When I press enter, it'll go ahead and run it, but that's not very clear to users. So what I want to do is actually show you the command that we're going to run.
Command we're going to run is run iQuery and we're going to specify the source member parameter test XLS source file parameter cozy test slash QSQL source. That's all we have to specify. All the other parameters that would normally be specified on this command are actually embedded in the source member so we don't have to worry about them. We can just run them. Now we go ahead and press enter. We get the 12 records written to file home slash cozy slash qcustcdt.xl. Now what we don't see is the message about the email being sent and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and press F10 and let's look at the low level messages. And this is actually what is logged behind that command once it's run. The first line underneath the command itself is iQuery script. It tells you I'm running iQuery script and this is the source file library member that I'm processing. Because iQuery script allows you to include other source members, it will put a line in there for each source member it opens as it opens it so you'll know what it's entering as it's running. Then it shows you the results of the process, which is the 12 records plus zero heading lines written. Then the Cozy Productions send mail command is run. Now this is a free tool that we give to any customer who wants it. You can also use the IBM send email message using SMTP command, which is on everybody's system now and works substantially similar. So if you want to integrate that, we work with either command. You specify which version you'd like. I use this one because it always works and it's set up properly. So here what we're doing is we're running the send mail command. Notice the, the two users specified. There's nothing for carbon copy. There's nothing for blind carbon. The subject is specified. The email messages attachment text is all there. And then the Excel file is being sent as well. And then we have the 250 confirmation message from the email server with the acknowledgement ID there and saying it's been accepted for delivery and then the complete send mail command. So it's all done. So it should be sent in the email. Let's go over and look. All right, we've got the email that come in now. It, you can see the subject line is hello from SQL iQuery and the email itself says attach, please find the sample Excel file. Just like we put in the iQuery script. The Excel file is attached. Let's go ahead and open that. And you could see the formatting we specified, the blue text, 20 points, yellow background in cell A1 as the sort of report headings. Then in the lower right hand corner, we have the column total specified. Again, they're in yellow background with black text. So they all work out pretty well, much more readable. And also look over here, the tab is named awesome because that's what we wanted to be, awesome. So that's how you use SQL iQuery scripting to create awesome results instead of these blurry blah results from RPG and Query 400. You just use SQL iQuery and you get the results you want the way you want them and it just works. You don't have to add all these other tools on to make anything work. It just kind of happens. If you have any questions, I'm Bob Cozy. You can email me at the address shown here. Otherwise, we'll talk to you next time.